Welcome, Sean Stinn, to White TV. Oh, we are proud you. that you uh, came from the United States. It's a long way to I'm, Stockholm. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to come and uh, uh, see you, and thank you for everything you've been doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had contact during uh, the telephone conversations. Uh, we started in, in last summer uh, for the uniting of TIs, uh, targeted individuals, uh, victims of mind control. Right. Uh, because one one uh, important point is that uh, they join from all the countries. There is not one single country without a TI. Yeah, that's uh, pretty amazing, huh? Yeah, and, and then they have to join forces, and, and they this resulted in the ICE Act, I guess. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a new group. That's like Lars and... Uh, I forget, Lars Pete. from Denmark, yeah. Lars Drugod, yeah. Lars Drugod, and another one, Peter Rosenholm. Peter Rosenholm. And, and I forgot the third guy. He's the paramedic. Uh, um, um, Derek. There's, no, that's not Derek. It's another guy. Yes. Okay. Jesse. Jesse, that's right. Jesse Paltram. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Jesse. Uh, <laughs> uh, so so um, we made steps forward to, to, to fight back and uh, by uniting and uh, starting association societies. And um, uh, therefore, it's also good that we meet now and um, complete the puzzle we lay with all the interviews of TIs all the world over. Uh, so that uh, laymen and professionals can get convinced what's going on because it is so difficult to show w what's inside everybody's head. And I, I usually start with the question, how started it is in your case? I think it's since I was a kid. I, my dad was a cryptographer in the Korean War. And he actually complained to his sister about some things like this. I was just telling Magnus this earlier. Uh, somewhere around the timeline was like in the 50s, like 1956 or something. And so he was in the time. NSA? Uh, no, I think just in the regular military. Okay. Marine? I think Army. Army, okay. And, and, and what are the indications that it started so early? Uh, I think we knew them. Or he, he was very smart, you know, like a, a very high IQ. And they knew that they, I mean, he actually knew he was being that they were keeping tabs on him. So did my mother. And then, uh, okay. just gradually, gradually, I, the tax come. Yeah. And they just start working on that person. And, and, and how, how did you realize that you are also targeted? They hid it from me, I think. There were several times when I got in an argument or something happened, and then it just stopped, and they wouldn't say anything else. Or like I couldn't figure out what was going on at different times in my life. And then finally, by about... I'd say about age 37 or so, then I realized stuff was really going down. Like I was, people were, you know, I was getting stalked and I complained to people in my family about this and they were, yeah, the traditional answer like, this is all in your mind and, crazy. yeah, you know, ignore it or it's really bothering, just ignore it, keep going, you know, and then, yeah. then uh, I succeeded through that and succeeded in college and then once that really started happening, that's when it, they came full off after me. But there were a lot of things earlier in my life that, when you look back through the prism of a TI experience, you can start to see things that are like, you know, you're. I was pretty well surrounded for years. I didn't really even realize what was going on. A long time. Did you have some brain surgery when you were a child? No. Uh, could it be that a dentist put in something? I did, actually, that's funny you should say that, because I did uh, catch a dentist one time drilling, and he took this thing, had it in the tweezers, and he was fitting it in my tooth, and I said, I stopped him, like, what is that thing? And he, was, he told me, it was, actually, I recognized what it is from a book when I was studying engineering. It was a, it was a crystal, it's a radio crystal. It had a, a wire connecting the two ends with a little piece of semiconductor material on it. And he told me at the time, I was like 15, you're drilling, 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 this is a huge molar. And uh, he told me, no, this is just to measure the depth of the hole. And then I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, and then he folded it, and I just went, you know, put my head back again. But I didn't, I didn't think of that. And then, uh, except I did have some kind of an attack right after that, when I left the dentist. Oh, shit. I sounded like a uh, radio. 
uh -huh. radio station. So it was like crazy pain. I was riding my bike and it was like blinding. And I told my uh, dad this and we laughed at the dinner table. Like, isn't that funny? You hear the radio in your mouth. I, like, I thought it was funny too. I, and what was she in? Hmm? What was she in? Oh, that was Jane Fonda. Oh, Jane Fonda. Oh, that was uh, 1980. 1980. Yeah, a long time ago. Like about 15. I was about 15. Yeah. Ago. And um, in which town? In Chicago. What was the name of the dentist? Uh, Dr. Michaels. So I, I went back there actually. I thought about that and it, it, it was like locked up, but he's still there. And I found out later, actually, incredibly, both of my sisters went to the same dentist too, so I didn't oh. ask them about it. And they are targeted as well, your sisters? Uh, I think they don't realize it. Like, and they're, yeah. they've, I've talked to them a little bit about it, and uh, you get the traditional response, like, uh, yeah, it's in your mind, or, you know, there's nobody bothering you. Or, mm -hmm. And this also happened to my mom, so. Yeah, yeah. Her life, she's actually disappeared. Yeah, I don't think. realize it because that's just the case that they will. They'll go after the whole family, really, and then recruit some, and then they do things to those people, too. But they never realize it because they think they're, like, insiders mm -hmm. or whatever, like, or they're trying to help their sibling or family member through it. They're sincere, but it ends up being just uh, horrendous, you know, like a terrible insincerity and... They try and encourage the denial and all these type of things. It's really uh, stressful for the relationships. Did they instrumentalize your, your sisters that they made uh, some criminal actions or something like that? No. I mean, they live their life. I think they're both happy. I mean, one, yeah. one's doing very well and one works at night. I think she has uh, kind of a tough job, but like we're completely separated. I don't talk to I talked to one on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We were separated almost as children, like uh, less oh. than... 10 or 12 years old. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah, really. Uh, that's a usual tactic as well to separate. That's a long multi generational uh, uh, situation in my family. It's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And your parents are still alive? Nope. They, uh, the one, these are terrible stories actually that were reported on in Chicago. One, uh, the, my father, the, the one with the high IQ and uh, cryptography. He died mysteriously. My mother was supposedly was supposed to be schizophrenic, but I don't think there's anything wrong with her. She disappeared. Uh, my aunt was another genius. Uh, she did math. She was sterilized and then she died mysteriously. And on the last one. <laughs> that was uh, reported on in uh, in uh, Chicago, a lot of sterilizations, like right around 1980, between 1978 and 1981. It was reported on in Chicago by Carol Marin, she's a famous reporter. As Kiss Kissinger puts it, uh, we want to get rid of useless eaters. Uh, he's of the right. opinion that too much uh, people on, on the planet. But, but uh, when we now focus on your father's death, in what kind was it mysterious? Uh, he had a surgery. Then he was injured in the surgery, and then he went to another specialist, and he like disappeared. He ended up, his sister found him in some hospital in California, and he was uh, in a coma. And he was like full of uh, infections and stuff. And she flew him out, like medevaced him, and then back to Chicago. And they revived him, and he was talking, and she thought he was okay. She went to her summer home, and they called, and he was—he died. He had to come back, and what was the was in, official reason for the death? Did they make it, an autopsy? They said I got the uh, paper. It was—they said it was pneumonia, but she said something like a stroke happened, or different things. Like so many strange things. I was like, "Come on, what is this? What's going on here?" You know. What could be the purpose? Like he just went to visit a special. I think he was going to. Uh, have a su successful outcome, and they found him transferred to like two different places, and he was in a like a uh, hospice or something like where people were to pass. What was she his saved him. Name? This place, I think the name of this place is called Kinder Care. That was the name of the. And your father's name? Uh, Wayne Stinn. 
Waves yeah. 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 Uh, could, could there be a reason to take him out? Was he starting to uh, whistle blow? Or? I don't know. I think that uh, at different times in my life they said that we're, people were watching us or they weren't. And I, I didn't pay attention to it, but um, I think it was supposed to come to an end somewhere around my uh, age 37 and they didn't want to do it. They never, I don't think they let any of them go. I've heard stories that they let some TIs go or they watch, they say they watch people and then they're, these people are okay, they're going to let them go. They never do. They always hear them, even though the person doesn't realize it. But their life is limited and they're held and uh, in particular, economically, they always have their hand on their economics. It's uh, Yes primary uh, attack point. And, yes. then, and the other things are support with family and uh, yes, marriages. Isolation and destroying the, the economic basis. Yes. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah. As you were talking earlier, that um, I don't know how many other TIs are going to come to Europe to talk to you, <laughs> but I'll swing it if I can. You know, yeah. Any way I can get some money and come over. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's good. And, and, and but it was not yet that your father started to, to write the book or something like that? No, he always cooperated with them and uh, he knew about this stuff. I think before 1980 people knew about this like exponential function with the like a standing wave function and I've seen it drawn and I've seen a I swear I saw a film of this thing actually it was waves that came out and you can it could pick things up and hold things, but the guy had it at a frequency where you could see it in air. It was really cool, and uh, they had it on the news, and they thought it would have uh, implications for many other disciplines, and then, like six months later, that guy like jumped in front of a train or something, and it, was like, it all went away. And I've seen this in math, I've seen it described, and I've tried to talk to mathematicians and physicists about it, nothing, but I think I'm onto it now. So. And what exactly did you see? It's a spiraling function, but it's parametric. It takes two sources. So, so you have seen it in theory in, in, in mathematic books or physics books? Uh, I've seen it written on the board. I've never actually seen it written in a book. Okay. But uh, I've seen the actual uh, a wave system, like a standing wave system that can do work at a distance. Do you remember the title of the book? <clears throat> no. I saw this thing on the news and then it was the same story. It was really weird because this happened to me on an all platform where the guy, I think they did a dry run on me, you know, just like the guy came walking up with the notebook with the yeah. apertures I was describing. And there's a leather strap. I'm like, what's this guy? I thought he was working for the, uh, you know, train or yeah. something. But he's standing there looking right at me like he's aiming this thing at me. And I was like, what's it's going to just when he's talking. The computer or yeah, he was looking at the screen and he would look at me and he'd adjust it. He did something and then I was like, uh oh. And then I stood there and all the people left the platform. It was in Central then, Station, Chicago. Mm, it's on the, it was in a, two different sta stations in Chicago. <clears throat> and one day, the guy, I, when I was going to work, when I was going home, and then that's what I first saw the polarization scheme where I thought that's what they're doing. Yeah. It took years for me to like go to engineering school and realize what I saw, but yeah, so, so you have that's a what it is. Degree in engineering. I do I have a degree in bioengineering. Yeah. From University of Illinois. Yeah. And so far they're trying to like, kick me out of Northern now. I'm at I study uh, a master for the master's degree in physics at Northern Illinois University, but I have to appeal now. I passed their qualifying exam. It took me two years to study as a TI to pass that exam. Yeah, <laughs> that was very that's difficult. Really done, yeah. But uh, yeah, well, we so know from know. our research that they use so-called scalar waves. Yeah, this is very intriguing. I'm not sure what part of that is in this. Uh, like a, it's a standing wave. Part yes. of it is a standing wave. Part of it is a uh, decay an exponential decay, like a piece of uh, <clears throat> what's known as a sink wave. Have you ever seen this? It's almost like a Gaussian. No, I don't know what a sink wave is. It's a remarkable. It has remarkable features. It's yeah. like the Fourier transform is a, 
of the square or inverse is a, of a square square signal. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Does a lot of tricks. Actually, this guy, uh, what's his name, Mail. Yeah. My professor. My, Mike yeah, Mike. this guy will tell you some stuff about that. Actually, yeah. I'll write the functions down if you see them. You can send them to him. Yeah. Because I've I had some printouts. I left them at the hotel. I was like, well, I don't know what you know. What we're really going to talk about? It's pretty. It starts like engineering talk. So I don't know if you're going to talk about the experience or. That's my focus now. Is I'm dealing with all the stuff they throw at me. But the main focus is trying to duplicate the technology and. and yeah. And demonstrate it. So, yeah, to this isn't anyone's it. imagination. You don't have to believe me. You can verify it. You can convince yourself. Yeah. And in the United States, you, you have a, 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 a researcher, Tom Bearden, uh, who, who knows a lot about scalar rays and scalar rays interferometers. Uh, he is uh, was always still working for the Army. Who is this guy? Tom Bearden. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think I've heard that. Uh, he, he's quite well known, uh, but, but uh, Professor Meyer in Germany knows more about scalar rays because he made the basic physics on it, how it is working, and, and he, he also says the, you need a resonance with the TI, and this is a standard wave, and right. it, it must be a, a, a difference in the phase by 180 degrees. Oh, uh, he likes 180. I do. I do it as. The, the function of doing my math program are like 90 degrees out of phase at an orthogonal, so that is 180, I guess. But yeah. Standing yeah. wave is, is 180, it's yeah. pi, it just yeah. goes back and forth. Must and it goes the like this. Same frequency, yeah. right, in the same and form of the wave. Right. Yeah. It will do that once the wave attaches. It's like if you have a, uh, a rope, like a jump rope tied to the end of a table, and you wave it, you can put a lot of waves in it or not yeah. so many. Yeah. You can also shoot them back and forth, yeah. you know, like yeah. a pulse. And what I learned that they, they cheated us uh, in, in the education of physics. There is a official physics based on Einstein's uh, theory <laughs> right. of relativity, but that's bogus. Um, and that, that there is a secret physics uh, telling the truth how it's really working. <laughs> and, and, and there's Tesla. Uh, 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 started to detect and, and to manifest, and Professor Mayano was uh, uh, preceding uh, the work of Tesla. I think it's for, in particular for Maxwell's equations, it's nice and neat if there are no monopoles, you know, if it's the sum of them. It's like uh, E equals zero. That's, you know, yeah, the problem is they, 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 they falsified the Maxwell equation. When Maxwell died, and there's more, and Gibbs. There's more things to it. Yes, yeah, and, and they put this scalar part to zero because right. they said we can measure it. Yes, at that time they couldn't, but later on one could. And now Maya says, uh, don't be crazy, don't put it to zero because this is vital. Yeah. And then if you don't put it to zero, uh, then, then uh, you found a new kind of physics, and therefore they right. call it scalar wave because the scalar part was put to zero earlier. I don't know anything or anything that I haven't read on the internet about it because even though I study physics, I don't. Nobody talks about that. So. No, because in, in, in the yeah. education, right. this yeah. information is withheld. Right. It, well, whatever is happening, I, there's a fair amount of work went into like making uh, even even as Maxwell was making equations, I think he fixed one of them a, a fair day, and it, just to make them nice and neat, everything's like a very nice compact statement. They're very nice, and they have a lot of implications. But I think that's uh, I fixed I fix the Ampers law, um, added one piece, but that's like things that they like to do. Like mathematicians and physicists like to make a nice compact statement that's always works. You know, I don't want to accept it. <laughs> this would be very difficult to solve if there's like little extraneous pieces. They'll just make it zero anyway. Yeah, it, it was the Faraday cage that, that put that on, us on the trace of the scalar waves because most of TIs, the first thing they do, they go and hide in a Faraday cage. I, I don't think that's going to work, actually, but they're going to... No, it, I think it's, I it's can. the result. <laughs> and uh, uh, that means it must be some other waves than electromagnetic waves because if they would target you with electromagnetic waves, you would get a shelter in a Faraday cage. 
But you don't. You can play with the frequency too and still get in the cage, I think. But oh, well, if it's, there's a couple it's, of tricks. It's, it's, it's a very good cage. No. And in other TIs, one Swede, he uh, uh, went to the north of Sweden where we have the, the uh, iron mines in, in Kirana and, and got 700 meters beneath the surface. No cell phone is working there, nothing. But he got targeted. Oh, yeah. He was not uh, sheltered. That's also one uh, thing that happened to me when I realized that I was being targeted was that uh, people were following me with phones and like clicking the phone and I would walk by and I was like, oh, whatever this is. And I realized I was in the subway and like, no cell phone's going to work there, you know, underground. And they, they all have their cell phone on. I'm like, well, how are they talking? Who are they talking to? Mm -hmm. You know? And that means they must they know use I were... scalar waves. And if you do the biology and look how our body is working, then you find, aha, the body is working also with scalar waves. As uh, Miles found out, not electric scalar waves, as Tesla found, but magnetic scalar waves. That's the clue. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you want to attach to a GI to a human, you need to adapt to the technology of the body. And the technology is, of the body is using magnetic scalar waves, and therefore they have to use it. It's as simple as that. I think all those points are important, and uh, especially in um, the idea of standing wave or um, interference and um, the self-referencing nature of this type of uh, signals are are part of life. Yeah. And I think this is a bit, yes. and it's. Um, I think if you have a good trick in that, you can really exploit it horribly. It's like horrifying <clears throat> to be a victim of that stuff. But uh, I forgot what I was going to say about that. But, oh, I think that if you can do, I mean, I think I can do get this, you know, do this math this summer to make like a torque and a standing wave. And I think if you can do that and you can uh, polarize it right and get the phase right, you can make a point to point. Uh, connection between uh, devices, uh, uh, electro, I mean, electronic devices, or uh, tissue, people. Yes. Like, uh, yes. Either way. And in deeper, you not even need like it doesn't even have an antenna. I don't think you can pick it up with an antenna. Like you have to have a loop to go. You know, it's just going to be. Uh, it's not like broadcast. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a it's long a very unusual. Wave, uh, that, that scale of wave. It's long, I, long total I think once you get the, if you can get the signal to attach, you can. The retreating wave just stands. Yes. And it goes. You know, there's some interference maybe, but. Uh, and you don't I think it's need, very unique. <laughs> yeah, you don't even need a chip in the TI. Oh, no. uh, uh, if they have your DNA, it's sufficient because the DNA is an antenna itself. Oh, uh, and that's uh, also very intriguing. Uh, uh, area to discuss, and uh, I think that they're actually very much interested in those uh, uh, DNA and uh, uh, especially of geniuses. I mean, I think that there's a lot of history of the program that includes uh, implants, various all kinds of stuff. I mean, people. I mean, if you look through a, the whole uh, spectrum of TI experience, it's like crazy. I mean, some of them are, have. Uh, Terrible hospitalizations and druggings, and uh, yes. others have implants, and then others have. I mean, it's probably, you know, if you think of how many, for every person who thinks they're a TI on Facebook, there's probably a dozen who probably, you know, their life is over, they're committed suicide. You know, you never hear from them. Yes, and many, many more that don't even know that's happening to them. They're just having a terrible time. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's like horrifying. Or they use them as killer machines and then they're forced yeah, to kill themselves. Th this is also like, a, I've seen this on. Uh, the news were respect reporters, like one guy is George Will, and the woman was Cokie Roberts. They're talking about uh, Mark David Chapman, this guy who shot John Lennon. Like they were saying he was being watched, and I'm like, I didn't know I was a TI at this time. I'm watching this on uh, Sunday morning news or something. Like, uh, and he got a, the woman told him to shut up, and like, don't say that. And then they went to a commercial, and then it was over. I thought, God, that's weird, you know. I was thinking like a normal person, like. What if those people who say that mind control is real and they're really doing that now? now I'm like, yikes. But uh, I think that's uh, uh, likely. Yes, it is. That, uh, I think this happened many times. We've been doing that for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's, 
the height of deniability. You know, the guy's nuts and they're gonna lock him up. That's it, you're gone. You know, no one will ever suspect that. No. Uh, Siran, Siran, who brought a, a boy oh, yeah, there's another one there. Same case. Like, you can't interview him, he's not allowed to talk, he won't... You know, Harvey Oswald, not yeah. controlled. There's another one that was like, it's way too many pieces missing from the puzzle, you know? Like, he's fluent Russian, or he goes to Russia, or he's yeah. a spy, he's not a spy, he's got training, you know, they don't have a training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good shooter, he can't shoot, you know, like... Timothy McVeigh. Which one? I don't know about that guy, but... The Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, the Ula Bomber. Bomber. All the line on that's not controlled. There's several that are standouts that I think, and you know, and many, probably many others we don't know about, but those in particular where I've seen actual, you know, or reputable people discussing their, about these guys or their close to um, programs or, or reporters, people reporting the Pentagon. There's another guy, his name is Seymour Hirsch. He yes. reports about the yes. Pentagon, yeah. mm -hmm. like spooky stuff, and he gets a weird look on his face like, you don't want to know about that, like, whoa, are we kind of, <laughs> what'd you tell us about it? It just goes away. And many of those things are going away. And people, that's like the edge of uh, the believability of the TI stories, part of, a big part of the spectrum. But I think it's um, probably one of the first things that they tried to do. You know, if they thought they could control a person, that's mm. immediately what they would do. Mm. Because it just, it's just so nasty that they people won't believe it, but... That's actually what they do. When was it the first time that you definitely realized you were a GI? I've had actually people tell me that people were watching me and I didn't believe them. Um, I think this happens at TIs at different times, I think. Why would somebody be watching me? I'm just some person, you know. Come on, it's ridiculous. And uh, I would say um, when I really realized it was I was going, I just was going to University of Illinois at Chicago. That was like 2004 or something, where it was like, I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. I'm in serious trouble. And the guy came after me on the help platform and with the computer, and then he walked away. Or I just got on the train, and he was sitting in a chair. And I was like... The, the scene mm -hmm. you just described earlier. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, what was that? I have no idea what that was about. And then when I went home, I still had a job at that time. And then I was, that I ended up getting framed or something. I, I quit. I was really paranoid for a while. And then uh, they were all pain? over me. And he was targeting you? With no, that? I didn't feel any sensation, actually, until later. Mm -hmm. And he's going to do a lot of stuff to you. But, uh, yeah, then and that's when you're at the beginning, your world really collapses, you know. Mm -hmm. You start realizing people can do just horrendous things to you and uh, but, but no yeah. one will believe you. And yeah, a little more precisely, what exactly happened that, that you realized that? How did you get the information? Oh, first it was uh, walking, like uh, walkers. Um, it started at this job I had. Um, they have uh, secret shoppers that they send to test you to see how you're doing in your retail stuff or whatever. So I figured out, I identified all of them. <laughs> so I would always treat them nice and I got a good score. And then I realized there's other people were coming and there was more and more and more. And then I started to watch people more closely and then slowly it started coming on to me that, uh, and they started the V2K. Oh. So then I was like, no, I know I'm in trouble. This is, uh, it happened before, too. I, I didn't realize it. I thought I had been, uh, hung, I was hung over or something. V2K is voices in your yeah, skull? Yeah, it's like synthetic, they call it synthetic telepathy, or mm -hmm. the voice beam, or... Well, what kind of voices did you hear by V2K? Was it music or was it... Oh, uh, it's like a narrator. Start saying the things you're doing, uh, um, commenting on what you're doing, and then it degrades. Always the same voice? No, it switched, and then uh, later it did. There's like a team. I got, I kind of got upgraded to uh, their core team, and they just really were harassing me. I mean, just uh, 
Male and female. He, he rating uh, was not there was one female, but very rarely did she come on to the broadcast. But there was one in Chicago, I think, or one or two. And they uh, they I don't know what level they're at, but it's like pretty close to the top. I don't know if they know the whole thing, but there's about I saw these guys actually. There was a case. I recognized them later. That they were, I saw them walking around. They were walking me on different in different places in my life, and uh, they were on TV. They show up in the same reporter's office. Her name is, her name is Carol Marin. And this, they were com the case was about this kid had been sterilized there in a dorm room somehow. It was complicated, and these four guys showed up, and they just started yelling at him, like they wanted him out of the country. And his mother was there, like you know, like I gotta get my kid out of the country. And the, this reporter was there, like she's very strong. She's like valiant reporter. She was like totally shaken. And these guys were just yelling all kinds of stuff at this guy, at this kid. And uh, I don't know what happened to that story either, but uh, I recognized all four of them. That's they know me. They're like top four agents. Did you just uh, tape the, the, this, uh, this um, television? I tried to get. I've never been able to get next to that reporter, Kelmer, and I tried to. Uh, I left letters for her. I emailed her. Some people call me back and brush me off. But they have footage of these guys, and she tells a story. That's a top contact if you want to put the stories of TIs together. Like the real horror stories, you have to contact this woman, Carol Marin. I think she wants to tell the stories too, but she doesn't really know what's happening. She's a journalist. Yes. For what medium? Uh, she works for NBC TV, on TV. In Chicago. And in print at the Chicago Sun Times, and also on public television at WTTW. Mm -hmm. So she's one. Of, I think she was on 60 Minutes for a while too. Oh, really? Right. She's known nationally and and locally in Chicago. Uh, yeah. So oh, those are. Approach her. I tried to. <laughs> I tried to. I just. You know, I'm like too small to. Or I have to go to her house or something and find out. You know, I don't want to get up. the cops are going to come after me or something. But uh, I think if I can put more stuff on my site, my website is terrible. Uh, if I can put more stuff on there and then. Try and get TIs to email her with the website. Maybe she'll respond. What's the address of your website? Uh, my, web, my website, it's not really done, but uh, it's nsasurveillance.info. So mm -hmm. if anybody sees it, maybe by the time I, yeah. I have some stuff up on there. I like to have, put the math and science up there to see. There's such fantastic stories and very difficult to believe that I would like to you know, I think it's important that the stories are told, but I would really like to be able to convince people of the science with the science. Mm -hmm. and say, uh, you know, I really don't want to be misunderstood or not believed or thought to be mentally ill or schizophrenic. Like, this is a terrible, terrible crime against humanity, in my opinion. Yes, and these are yes. wonderful, wonderful people. And it's, it's a miracle to be alive, and it's just horrific to treat people, innocent people, mm -hmm. uh, this way. Yes, it is, really. And mm -hmm. it's a big danger that we end up as small robots all over the world. It's horrendous. I mean, they're just... Um, it's a horrendous history. I think all of it should be told, and I think it ends up to be, um, you know, fantastical in uh, some ways as you uh, reach out to, like, Manchurian notions and things like that. Um, yeah. But just the regular TI experience is very, mm -hmm. quite nasty. All by itself. So. Uh, the V2K in your case is it 24 7 or sometimes only? Uh, it's not much now. It's mostly uh, like I can't, I don't hear them, but you can feel it. Like you can feel ideas. I'm uh, sort of like on silent mode. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that, that's not V2K, that, that is telepathy. In the yeah, way. it's like and, synthetic telepathy. And, and, and they have in. in, 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 in so uh, good. Um, now somebody is trying to disturb my thoughts. Horrible. <laughs> um, they they um, have reasonable 
conversation with you. Sure. I, get, I think you can do it. You can actually have the conversation semi-consciously or unconsciously and keep going about your business. Yeah. Like you can do more than one thing at once. Do you have a feeling that they can look through your eyes? Oh yeah, that, that was, that's one of the first uh, things I went with the V2K at the beginning. Like, clearly, there's a common thing on everything you're doing, like, you can see exactly what I'm doing. I, you know, what's going on? How does this even work? This is crazy, you know. You, you really you get uh, nervous yeah, of and collapse. Yeah. Of course. Do they molest you sexually? All, all kind of, every, you know, part of your body that they can attack, they do. Yeah. I don't know if people always realize it, but they will uh, uh, interrupt or affect your sex or I think they'll do almost anything to anybody they can get away with. Yes. Like uh, just antagonize them every possible way. And they can induce pain to every inch of the body. Oh yeah, sure. You, you so we were talking about this also with things like heating and cooling and uh, yeah. heart stopping, like I get that uh, heart attacks, you know. They're big on that, on blood pressure and uh, and uh, these like searing type of pains too. Yeah. I, I've had. Also, one time I was doing laundry and that guy just burned me on the side. I didn't take a picture of it, but it was about the size of a quarter. I mean, it just like lit me up. I was like, Ooh. I thought. I thought usually it's short, you know, like the, the guy gets mad or something and uh, just zapped me. And I, I went home and took my shirt off and it was a, a red circle, like a quarter, about the size of a quarter. Mm -hmm. That was pretty, that was amazing. I realized like, this is very bad. Could, could you give us a good example of how they read your mind? I think this can happen at all different levels of consciousness. Like, there's plenty of headroom in the technology, so to speak. Um, uh, like it would take you like a half a second to realize something, almost like a, how fast you can react to like a starter pistol. You know, there's a window of time where you can't really do anything yet because you didn't realize what's happening. And I think to them, this is almost like an eternity to the technology. Like they have, a, if it's going to take you five or ten milliseconds at the fastest reaction time ever, uh, and they can do something in microseconds, they can do you're they, so they far ahead of you. scale of age and they are faster than light. It was a big lie from it's, Albert Einstein that nothing is quicker than light. Scale of age on, yeah. and Hermann Obert told it always, thoughts are quicker than light. Yeah, I think most of what happens in the human experience is there's a lot of energy um, and time spent realizing things and what's happening. You get to think about them, and it's a tremendous gift. But when it's a machine or a chip that doesn't have to do that, and it can run at you know, megahertz, and nothing, I don't think anything really happens in the brain above one megahertz, or, uh, I think that's the top limit, and most of the functions are much lower, you know, in hertz or hundred hertz, kilohertz, something like that, at the most, mm -hmm. and uh, I think they can manipulate thoughts and feelings and impressions um, what, just unnoticeably, like the person will not notice it, only through the behavior. Like they would go, you would have a feeling, well, I don't know why I did that, or how did that happen, mm. or something. And uh, gradually, I mean, they, the things that are done to me now are like almost like a, a nudge on a shoulder, like mm -hmm. you know, it's loud or it's it's a lot, you know, like you see that we just did that. Did you notice that? You know, like. You, like I know it's this guy's doing this, like almost like a communication with a guy, like a rivalry or something. Mm -hmm. Like if you go along and things don't bother you, they'll notch it up. You know, mm -hmm. they want you to know as you become a TI. They want you to know that they're doing it to you. You know, they want you to always feel like that. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty bad. Do they tamper with your memory? Oh uh, yeah, I get this one. Um, I've seen this in others that I knew there were TIs. They were in uh, uh, the parents of these uh, TIs that we have. Uh, what you have is um, it's almost like uh, Alzheimer's or something, where you you forget the names of things. Like, but yet now I could feel it. Like I'll be thinking of something and it's gone. Mm -hmm. Like they can do this like word by word. 
Mm. It can be done word by word. Yeah. You can fight. I've only a couple times. I have actually. I think I remembered the word that I was looking for, just by mentally going through the alphabet and trying every letter to try and figure out what word I was trying to think of. And sometimes it takes me days, and like a couple of days later, I realize what it was absurdly easy to a word. You know, the guys just screwing around. They just mm -hmm. they can actually um, add and subtract. Uh, uh, in my experience, ideas words. Word by word, word specific. Mm. It's word specific. You can recognize words. Or they can manipulate stuff at that level before you can realize it. You know? Yes. Do, do, do you have a, 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 a suspicion that they swapped some of your memories, that they erased reality and got some false uh, memory instead? No, but I've had heightened memories that I thought that maybe in years gone by that they were doing something and uh, while that was happening I had a, a some part of my brain or my mind really noticed it and stored it like uh, special so I remembered the things like several things like uh, of the mathematics and different experiences of being followed like the guy somebody was putting some kind of flavor on the signal that your your mind can really grab, like some things you can really grab. So I, I mean, I wouldn't discount that at all. That you can uh, move mm -hmm. stuff around, but I think that the mind is resonant, and so even if you remove things, it's still in there, bouncing around. It just takes you a while to retrieve it. Uh, retrieval, mm -hmm. the path to retrieval and the path to consciousness are like uh, different paths that they can just play in endlessly. You know, once you have access to it, I think. That's pretty horrendous. Do you have a hunch uh, whether you are hooked up to a computer, the human brain interface question? Uh, I've had this feeling because um, I don't think any one person could sit there this lo that lo as long as I've gone through things and continually, manually be doing that. Like it's, it's some sort of program at different times of the day. Like, it becomes nonsense to, I mean, unless they have, you know, like eight people in shifts around the clock my entire life going, you know, like, now what can we do it? Now we can, you know, it's like, really, is this really happening? It's got to be a machine, you know. Some, sometimes in V2K, uh, uh, it's the same voice that freshes the beginning of the day, like, it can, and it's, I realize it's 12 hours later, this guy can't still be the same guy. You know, you just be out of your mind doing this to someone like, as bad as the person suffering, you know, it's like, how could you even sit there and do that that long, you know, mm. be exhausted. Yes, yes. Uh, did you have an explanation why, why let you know that you are mind controlled? The majority, they don't let you know, and that is important because those who know talk, uh, and that is a risk. Uh, do you have an explanation why they let you know? I do. It was, uh, I ended up working at a place with the people that I was working at in this really low in job. I was a bicycle messenger. Maybe half a dozen people in that office either were related to people with extraordinary IQs, like over 200, or they themselves had an IQ of 180 or above. And these what? are these are people that are one in a million. And, and your IQ? IQ? I don't never know. I didn't want to know because my, my dad was supposed to be uh, 211. Supposed to be immeasurable. Yeah. I don't know. His aunt, my sister, or it, my aunt, was his sister, was also very. Uh, she's the one who got uh, the, the hysterectomy. So I thought then that they're not sterilizing the person; that they're actually collecting it, uh, this DNA. That's my theory of it. Yeah, but they could do it without letting you know. Uh, I've I've heard that now they just they don't do a whole thing like they just do. A, uh, one ovary. The person never knows. It's like a surgery. They just have a diagnosis, and they're they're happy that they got a good prognosis. And then you never know. But this was reported also by Carol Moran. It was a really horrible story. It's horrible in my family. Because I have a suspicion that they uh, at least that know some of the TIs what's going on, because they have to train their computers 
if some DI is awakening, then they need programming for the computer how to fight back to, 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 to get them catched again. I think they can, like, uh, identify people with extraordinary uh, skills or extraordinary uh, thinking power or DNA that they're interested in uh, handily. Like, whatever it takes to do that, they can do it very fast. And as people were, oh, I've tried to tell, uh, actually I've been on Facebook and other places trying to tell people that I think you may be, you know, much smarter than you think, or you may be related to someone who's very smart. Or this, I think, is the origin of their original surveillance, was to keep track of, uh, like, someone like my dad, or strategic workers, or strategic geniuses, or like people from the Manhattan Project and stuff like this, like, they're one of a kind, they can't let this guy get kidnapped or taken or anything like this. Oh, they agents. Right, and so they, they watch them, they have, like, uh, no travel rules and stuff like that for certain people, I guess. Or they used to. But, and then, gradually, gradually, this just, it's just out of, it's just crazy. You know, like, if they can do this to these people, they can do all these experiments, they can do all this behavior to people, and they just continue, it's escalate and escalate and escalate around the world. Did they so, try to force you to commit a crime sometime? Uh, they, they'll they do uh, many types of attacks like this to, um, to do uh, socialize, like a socialized behavior. Like they'll, people will come or you'll be, have friends and uh, they'll invite the idea to do different, um, maybe some adventure stuff or some things, but I'm, it didn't really work on me. Other th times I've had people approach me with, uh, about guns, something which I was never interested in guns. But I thought about it later, like, it was really weird. It just came out of nowhere. <laughs> you know, like, uh, also, motorcycles and uh, like things that were, you can get in an accident and or, or do other things. I've also heard about this in, with uh, other people that were DIs. Like, you can get, just to have the possess, like, they'll try and get the person into some behavior and then get them arrested or get them in an accident and things like this, like just yeah. terrible things. But I don't, maybe part of, uh, you know, uh, it's probably part of uh, some other program like um, like Manchurian stuff where they just, mm -hmm. it's play to them, you know, for just an average TI, average. <laughs> but uh, I mean, in other programs, I'm sure that they have absolutely, you know, tried and true methods to get a gun in somebody's hand. Like they can do it fast. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they can convince them very fast. Did you have problems with psychiatry that they put you in domestic mental hospital? I meant, uh, I, I, uh, they didn't manage to get me, um, but I avoided it for a long, long time. I was very successful with that. And uh, finally they got me to sign something and I didn't realize what I signed. And I just wanted some sleeping pills. I could, uh, just give me some relief from this and that. What I had said to this, I was working for, I was doing experiments with a professor, and they were asking me about it, the situation I was in. I was like, man, I just wish this whole thing would be over, you know, and they were interpreting it like, you know, he's going to do something to himself or something like this. So they tricked me into going, the, they said the doctor wasn't there to help you. They tricked me into going to the emergency room to ask for some uh, sleeping pills, but when I signed the documents, they got me. I couldn't leave. They did lock me up for like four days. Oh, really? <laughs> did they contact I the judge? Not. No, they... They, they, they just were, locked they, you away? Yeah. Against your will? Yep. In Chicago? Yep. What kind of, is the name of the hospital? It's, uh, it's the University of Illinois Hospital. It's a research oh. hospital. It was. That was a like, crazy house, too. I mean, there's just people there. I mean, they were like on Thorazine and stuff. I mean, they're just drooling and... You know, they put you in there. They, they just harass you. They threatened me. Um, the first day, the guy threatened to uh, tie me down and put an IV on me if I didn't do everything and eat everything they gave me. And what is IV? I, I like, a, you know, they put the bag with the drip in your arm. Or intravenous, it's not for IV. 
So I was like, okay, um, man, they got me. I'm like, this classic story of many, many TIs getting, yes. getting locked up. And, uh, That's why I lost you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this also happened to my mom. It was like her life. And we believe that, actually, about her. And another TI a friend of mine is his mom also. Our okay. mothers were friends. Also, she taught at University Hospital? All over. She went to, like, uh, all different ones. They just marched her around. It was, uh, her life was spent that way. And then I can't find her now. She's, like, disappeared. She's disappeared. Yep. It's not declared dead. Nope. I, can't f I looked for the uh, death certificate uh, about three or four times. What's her name? Her name is Patricia Stinn. So I, I never got a missing persons report about that either, but... I, there's always someone, like every year or so, someone, there's some lead, and then it goes nowhere. What, which date is she born? She's born, I think, September 25th or September 29th, 1929. So she's up in her 80s now. Horrible. If she's alive, in somewhere. The freest country of the world. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nightmare. But this is, that's, uh, that was, they really got it. I mean, they, they really went after them. They were both uh, wives of uh, strategic workers. And I don't know what happened to the other one's um, first husband. But they had one that uh, she had a, the, the, with the government worker. She complained about this. This is my friend's mom. Said she would complain. This was in the 70s she used to say this stuff. That once you did that government work, that's when all this stuff happened. And she was already had been hospitalized several times, and we believed that she was had the same. We believed our mothers had the same disease. And uh, then she would say, "This was exactly what she said. The government man could see you in any room. They talk right in my ear." Uh, I was like, "Wow, that's so insane!" And we were like ten years old, or less than ten years old, early seventies. It's exactly the experience. I mean, it's exactly the experience. I said that back to him, trying to tell him, you know, like, that his, he's had trouble with his daughter now. She's, like, severely attacked. And uh, he just freaks out. And sometimes he just, I, I just left. He told me to go. You know, he can't face it. Like, you realize something horrendous is going on, and then he completely denies it. They just deny it and go back to their life. We often talk about they. Do you have a hunch who they are? I know the ones from the program, that the four I recognized on the news and uh, the people my dad was associated with were from NSA. Mm -hmm. So I don't even, I don't think the CIA can controls it. They try and do other stuff, but if they had this stuff, I think there'd be a lot more dead people. <laughs> yeah. I think they, they, they have access to it, but... Yeah, but the mastermind that. is probably the NSA and yep. the CIA. And the NSA is getting much more money than the CIA. Yeah. I think they use them. I think the NSA will use the CIA to do stuff and they will... Exactly. They will A little bit give, false flag, yeah. Yeah, like they'll, use, they'll loan them some things or show them some technology, but they never quite get their hands on it to own it and really manipulate it like NSA does. Yes. Yes. Like it's too, they got it. And they have their own hit squadrons in the NSA as well that we know? This case is, um, I mean, just the, the flagship of a TI experience, I think, is this uh, John St. Clair Aquai versus NSA case. Have you seen that? No. you got to download that one. That guy described everything in a, a lawsuit that was dismissed. And it's, uh, it's famous among TIs, like on Facebook and stuff. I don't know if you probably have that, right? Okay. Yeah, that one's very interesting. It has, like, frequencies and all kinds of, all the different branches of NSA in it that are do the different things, do walk, you know, what people call stalking or walk-around uh, yes. surveillance and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like different levels. And how they connect, I think, and I don't know if it's Echelon or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know all the program names, but they're, like, they go from country to country and have agreements to do stuff. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it has to be at that level to get this mm -hmm. done. You can't. Yes. It can't be so such an homogenous experience across such you know, yeah. so far across oceans. I mean, this mm -hmm. this is like horrendous. 
How much do you know about whether they use radar technology? Because National Security Agency, NSA, I think they use radar as well, aren't they? I think that um, a tor or standing wave or torquing field uh, far exceeds radar. That it's not it's not based on reflection. It's just based on feedback from but the waves. They use radar uh, machines to produce standing waves. Oh, okay. I'm I'm not an know. expert on radar, but um, I'm sure that'll do it. I mean, they have to. Um, have a very powerful source to try and reach as far as we can, make a big uh, yeah. area. So, but I mean, the stuff in just to experience in a room. I mean, they're almost to the point where they can set up a three space. Uh, I, you know, like what would you call it? Like a virtual camera, and look and turn it. You know, like that's the experience I get from what, how fast the guy can react to situations and people moving. Whoever's in the control room is doing stuff like. He can deliberately look around a room, or look in drawers, or look, you know, anywhere. It's like the materials don't stop him from seeing it. It's like mm -hmm. profoundly crystal penetrating uh, uh, imaging technology. Yes. I mean, it'd be like extraordinary to have that in a hospital to help people, you know, <laughs> to be able to go in a body and go after a tumor or something like this. Mm -hmm. Like to imagine what could be done. To help people to improve lives, and the, mm -hmm. this, the mo in the most profound sense, the opposite of that is happening. You know, they're just destroying lives. Yes, exactly. And it's that's it's just disgusting to me. I mean, so many. I think so many wonderful things could happen with the technology, and it's just yes. uh, it's horrendous. Mm -hmm. What have you taken measures for measures to uh, protect yourself? I'd say the uh, uh, best things to do is uh, if you can exercise and get as much sleep as you can, that's good. And uh, I unfortunately have, I sometimes smoke, sometimes don't smoke, I battle that. And uh, I think it's the best thing is to take the best care of yourself as you can. And I think one of the best things that's underrated is exercise, really. Mm -hmm. You can see. I'm losing that battle. <laughs> That's a constant struggle. In good company. But uh, this is like recently, I uh, get very stressful, and then I just you know, try and have some comfort from food. But, Did you test uh, some of the defender devices from Q Wave, the tabletop or the defender you're hanging around your neck? I never, I never done anything. The only, the only thing I'm working on now is. To try and get those that math to make those spirals the way I want, like standing wave spiral, and then uh, I'm going to try and build a circuit to try and do that. Mm -hmm. Even if I can do a simple one, even if it's just uh, uh, sync pulses, if I can get them to to spiral, uh, if I can get a torque to come out of it, like I know that it can be uh, used as a tool mm -hmm. to do work at a distance. That would be a uh, I think that's not too complicated, actually. That that's no, it shouldn't be. If if you get the clue, that that the R part is a vortex. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh. So I think that can be done. So I'll try and do that, or try and if I can make uh, math, I'll put it on my website. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to uh, put things on there though that are in a format that you can see or that you can save, and this is a constant problem for me. Like. Trying to build a website. So make a thorough study of right. Professor Miles' research. Buy his books. They are always uh, published in English. Oh, they are now. Okay, I thought it was in German. It's not in German. Right? No, both. He he published in German and English. Okay. In, in in my English interview with him, I I showed the books titles uh, in English. Okay. You should demand them. They don't cost a lot. Okay. Uh, and 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 then uh, then you can do the math or the physics uh, based on. Okay. Do you want to finally uh, say something to the audience? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, I think it's just my regular motto is don't give up, keep on going. You know, it's uh, that's the hardest thing in the world to do. And sometimes you kind of have to give up and just, you know, don't fight it too hard. You know, you're, mm -hmm. you're not going to come out every time, but uh, you got to keep on going. 
keep on struggling away until we can see what can be done. And uh, I think there's a lot of organization going on now. I think that's very cool. Yes. And I, I very much appreciate what you're doing here. Thank and, uh, you. And also, what Magnus has done, Magnus yeah, also, he, he has also made okay. huge steps forward with his mindcontrol.se homepage, which is always attacked. And he, he was a guy who contacted uh, yeah. us. Yeah, I think that was guy, uh, ICAT and Lars, and also Carmen. I thought she, she had a really cool site, too. Mm -hmm. um, Euro TIs. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I, on my website, wisetv.se, yeah. have a lot yeah. of mind control things. Yeah. Not so. only, but... but uh, uh, I keep going back there to visit, and every time I see something new, like uh, a mile or something. Yeah. So it's always interesting. And then you saw the English interview with the, the girl from Lüneburg. I, That's right. There's a, we were talking about a Korean girl. She's a student, you know. Okay, and there's another one. Uh, oh, okay, I didn't see the next one then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, and I finally want to put the question to you in the audience. Can you be sure that you're not mind controlled? Thank you. Bye bye.